Hi, and welcome back to the Aruba CX Quick Start series of videos. This next video is part seven and a continuing series of videos. And the intention is in this video to go a bit deeper into the CX 8400 switch series. So let's go ahead and jump in. So just as a refresher for those who may have skipped the other Quick Start series videos, Aruba CX has a wide range of switching gear that can range from both the enterprise campus access layer all the way to the aggregation and core, as well as even the spine and leaf data center designs. In fact, we can see the product lines here. At the bottom, we have the CX6300, which is a campus access aggregation or out of band switch in the data center. The 8300 is our data center spine and leaf type switch, which also is used as aggregation layer in campus environments. And then we have even have new CX6400, which are modular higher density access core and aggregation switches. Today, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into our highly available CX8400. This is our large core that's positioned both as a campus core as well as a data center core switch. This switch has deep buffers, large tables, and of course, carrier class high availability. Of course, the one thing about everything that we're seeing with the Aruba CX switching portfolio it, it truly is one operating system and one operating model from end to end. It's the AOS CX operating model. So let's dive into that 8400 here. So taking a look at the 8400, one of the most critical things when we're talking about highly available switches, like a large chassis switch like this, is the components in this switch, which actually give it that high availability. And one of the components is the management module. So within a single chassis based switch like this, we, we have a control plane, and of course, for high availability, we want to ensure that that control plane can always stay active. So in chassis-based switches, we'll have dual management modules. In the 8400, it uses an active standby system. So one active management module is responsible for handling all of the control plane packets on the switch. It keeps track of all of the line card states on the switch and it makes control plane decisions for each of those line cards. And of course, it'll send a keep alive to the standby management module to ensure that the standby module uh, is still ready to take over when needed. The standby ma management module continuously waits until there is a failover, and then it'll start handling that control packet uh, and routing calculation duty. Of course, while the standby module is in standby state, it's actually synchronizing the database so that it can be ready to take over in a quicker uh, fashion. Now, the management modules communicate via a backplane 10 gig connection, and this is where the database synchronization occurs as well as heartbeat levels occur. There's even a low level, uh, low speed bus on the mid plane that, al that allows election in case of a failover of the 10 gig backplane connection. So when looking at the database structure of the CX8400, we're actually using a current state database structure within both the active and management modules. So this is where the entire state of the system, the configuration and the status of all the protocols and agents running in the system are copied to this current state database. And all the agents in the system, they don't interact directly with each other, they interact directly with that current state database to get the information that each of those agents require. Now, all of this logic actually runs on the active management module, but this database is continuously synchronized to that standby module. And of course, this helps give us full visibility, full programmability, as well as resiliency because we don't have inter-process communication going on. And of course, this provides us with the high availability when we sync everything to the standby management module. So here we can see the active and the man standby management module. Each of them, of course, have a current state database with the processes running within the system. However, the processes within the active management module are the ones that are continuously writing the current state of the system into that state database. And then that database is simply being copied to the standby module. Now, within that standby module, that current state database is actively being synced to the kernel sync agent, and that helps us speed up failover. So that in case the active management module fails, we're able to speed up the table failover quicker when we do that. 
However, the other agents basically are caching the data because they can instantly read it from that state database. Of course, once a failover occurs, maybe either because the hardware fails or maybe the process goes down, that current standby will immediately take over and it'll notify all the neighbors that the routing protocol has gone down and it'll update the line cards to the current state of the latest database. Now looking at the fabric modules of the 8400, these are the fabric modules which provide and allow traffic to move from one line card to another. So these are the actual data path fabric modules that ensure high high performance communication between line cards across the fabric. And as you can see here, the switch has the ability to have three fabrics. It only actually needs one fabric to run and to operate. However, when you use only one fabric, you're not gonna be given line rate speeds on a number of the cards. And so of course, to get line rate speeds, we're gonna to wanna to have a minimum of two fabrics to get that line rate speed. And that third fabric will help give us that redundancy that we need. Now, of course, this is the fabric modules, the fabric connections, which use direct orthogonal connections that connect into the switch. Other connections actually use a midplane. So here we have the midplane, and the midplane connections are where management module communication as well as control plane and power communication gets communicated to each of the components within the switch. Taking a little bit closer look at those fabric connections and those fabric modules. So the switch supports three fabrics. We can see in the upper right, the orthogonal connections, which the fabric modules and the line cards connect into. There are actually 16 CERTES on there and the, these CERTES are each 25 gig CERTES. Uh, we're actually using 12 today in the first release of the modules. And so here we can see the performance and the capabilities using these first release modules within the 8400. So we're getting 25 gig for each of the CERTES. That gets us 300 gigabits to each line card. And we're looking at the uh, capacity fabric per slot. We're looking at 1.8 terabits per slot, which is 25 gig times 12 CERTES times three fabrics times two for bi -dive. Capacity for the switch, of course, is 14.4 terabits using the 12 CERTI solution. So that's 25 gigs times 12 CERTIs times three fabrics times eight line cards times two for the bi -dive. Now, another thing to mention on the Aruba CX8400 is the fact that it leverages virtual output queuing. So a chassis-based switch like the CX8400 is actually a multi-layer switching fabric. Really, you could think of it as a three-stage switching structure. And so at each stage, the output of each switching unit is connected to the input of the switching unit, units at the lower stage. And you could think of it like at stage one, there's multiple routes to get to the destination because you have these three fabrics that you have to go to. Once the packet has reached that first stage, then the subsequent switching to get to the destination, of course, there's only gonna be one route to that destination. Now the switching paths in this type of fabric are completely independent and they don't interfere with each other. And we do have strict non-blocking connections between these fabrics and these line cards. However, head of line blocking is a common problem that occurs in, in fabrics like this, where we have a lot of traffic going in to the switch and all destination pointed to a single point on the destination path. So you can imagine all line cards on the left are all trying to send traffic to the line card one on the right. That's going to cause congestion no matter what. And virtual output queuing helps us maintain a virtual output queue for each of those paths of traffic that goes to that line card. So we start basically buffering traffic on the ingress and we won't send this traffic to the fabric to get to that destination line card until we know that that fabric is capable of passing it on to the line card. And VOQ systems like this, they, they really help to alleviate this head of line blocking solution and they help improve network performance. 
Now, when we're looking at the CX8400 switch and the fabrics and the types of performance they could give, we need to look at the types of line cards that we're thinking about using. So in this scenario here, we're using the six port 100 gig line card with three fabrics. And when we do use this line card with three fabrics, we're able to get 100% line rate capacity for packets over 84 bytes. If we were to have a failover of one of those fabrics, the switch would continue passing traffic using these line cards. However, those six times 100 gig port line cards would start to decrease in the performance and they would get about an 80% line rate performance with two fabrics. Now, if we switch over to the 10 gig or the 40 gig line card, so we have a 32 port 10 gig line card as well as an eight port 40 gig line card, these can run at 100% line rate when running at two fabrics. So if we had three fabrics in here, one could fail and the performance would stay the same. Of course, if we did fail and go all the way down to one fabric using these two 10 gig or 40 gig line cards, then the performance of those fabrics would decrease also down to 75%. Now here we have a uh, layout of the system startup within the 8400. So, when you start up the 8400, the power supplies, of course, will come online first. The fans will come online next. And then we automatically start Management Module 1 and Management Module 2. In reality, Management Module 2 actually has a minor adjustment so that when it comes on, it powers on just a little bit later than when Management Module 1 powers on. And, and we go through this so that we can ensure Management Module 1 is the active. So Management Module 1 will go through this de-reset. It'll go through the pre-BIOS, it'll go through a UEFI, which is kind of the new name for what uh, enhanced BIOS is. And then we have the service OS process where it bootstraps the OS for recovery. And once it does that, then it loads the Aruba OS CX operating system, which starts the Linux kernel. And then we start the system D process, which is the big system process that ensures the active and standby election. And because, you know, I mentioned Management Module 1 starts just a little bit sooner, it's going to almost assured be, to be chosen as the active management module. And then after that, we start up all the rest of the daemons from the switch D, the line card D, the fabric card daemon, etc. And then, of course, we start all the line cards and the fabrics. For the fabrics, it's pretty simple. They just come online. We check that they're happy and online. For the line cards, there's a little more work. You know, we have that CPU and, and synchronization with the line card CPU. Of course, we may have to load code onto the line cards. And then, of course, the startup is complete. And finally, I'll leave you with the Aruba CX scale as of code release 10.4. Obviously, when we're scaling our environments and we're thinking about data center or campus core environments, we need to consider scale heavily. Scale both as physical scale of the interfaces on the switch, but as we see here in the switching capacity as well as the table scale capacity of the switch. So we need to ensure that we're scaling our environment to the proper needs of the customer's environment. We can see the 8400 listed on the right here. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this is the big boy with the large table scales. We can scale up to a million IPv4 unicast routes on this switch, 768,000 MACs and ARPs. So you compare that to the other access layer switches, and this is how we can determine where to place the switch in a demanding environment. So I hope that was good information to, for you. Please stay tuned to YouTube, the Airheads Broadcasting Channel on YouTube for additional quick start videos coming soon. Thank you. Thank you.